This is John from EastCoastArmory.com. I'm here today with a showcase video of the 1.6 scale Maybach HL210 and HL230 kits from EastCoastArmory.com. These were the same engines that were showcased in a previous video. Uh, since that video we can see that the engines have been completed and are now fully detailed and as well as painted and weathered. To start off, this engine here is the HL210 and this engine here is the HL230. As what was discussed previously, the, when the Tiger I was first developed, it was developed to use the HL210 engine. However, because the engine was not powerful enough, the designers then came up with the HL230. The HL230 has more horsepower than the HL210 and the HL230 came into production when the Tiger was in its early production and was used up until the end of the Tiger I. Now the early production Tiger I's it was more of a like a phase out period between the two engines. For instance when the Bovington Tiger, the one that's on display in England, was first captured it had was equipped with an HL210. However several other HL or several other early Tiger I's were equipped with the HL230. Both engines are water cooled and they are both V12. Some more background, the HL210 and the HL230 were gasoline powered. There's a myth that German tanks were powered via diesel engines. Uh, that is not the case. They were gasoline powered and <clears throat> if struck in the gas tank would ignite like any other vehicle that was powered with a gasoline engine. Starting with the HL210, the Air cleaner assembly is removable, revealing the tank's carburetor and manifold detailing. These silver objects here are the carburetors. They sit on top of the manifold. This over here is the fuel primer pump. You would pump this little toggle over here to prime the engine to get it started. Uh, this is typically done when the engine is removed and then replaced into the tank and you need to get fluid into the system. Moving our way from the carburetors, we have here the rocker arm covers. As we noticed, the rocker arm covers are individually marked. Over here we have rects, on here we have links. That's German for left and right. Now, on the HL210, this is where it starts differing slightly from the HL230. If we notice on the magneto placement on the HL210, the magnetos are placed on two large arms that are built into the rocker arm covers. The magnetos would then mount to there and then would then connect into the rocker arm cover like so. On the HL230, the magnetos were moved or had their locations removed, and rather than being on the rocker arm covers, were located to the center tower over here. Moving our way down, we have here two capped intakes. On the engine, this would be for water cooling. The, si the water system, the cooling system, would have two tubes that would connect to these two locations here. It would run over the engine and into the cooling system, which is described more in detail in another video. Both the HL210 and the HL230 have this system as identical. This round object here is actually the water pump, which is unique on the, on the Maybach engines. Typically, engines do not have this type of round system, which adds a little bit unique shape to the engine block itself. This here is the is actually a, a conduit for the fluid or for the water and it runs it continues underneath the exhaust pipe here and would then emerge from that conduit into this pipe and it would then come into this condenser this condenser here would then connect to the tanks cooling system which like I said earlier is showcased in another video this system is identical on both engines the HL210 and the HL230. Since we're on the bottom of the engine, over here we have the tank's alternator. You can pivot it up so you get a better look. Here we have the sediment separators. They were described in detail in another video. 
but roughly what they do is these here would be the fuel lines. Fuel would then enter into the separator and then flow out of it through the side over here and then this would then go into the engine or into the carburetors. These separators were intended to be used if you have any hard objects or sediment in your fuel they would settle on the bottom of these little jars here. When the sediment settles on the jars it's heavier and it sinks the fuel is lighter and that would skim off the top and that would go through the system. This was done to avoid any foreign objects or cloggages that occurred in the fuel line. These jars here are casted in clear resin and are included with the kit. Over here we have the tank's oil filter. You would take off these three hex bolts and the filter would be removed. These here are identical on the HL210 and the HL230. The only part that's a little different is that on the HL230, the fuel separators were reduced to two as opposed to four as were on the HL210. However, they still serve the same function. Moving our way to the other side of the engine, both the HL210 and the HL230 have the same layout. Here we have the oil tank. This is the manual starter, and this here is the electrical starter. In front of the engine, we have here the starter gear and front flywheel. On underneath this big housing here is the tank's large starter gear, which would be a large gear that would be turned either by the manual or the electrical starter. The starter gear is hooked up to this flywheel, flywheel here which is connected via universal joint and then this universal joint would then connect to the tank's transmission and would actually propel the vehicle. Now on the resin kit I designed or I developed the ability to have the, the universal shaft functional and you can turn it. Not only does this position or does this wheel spin, but if you go to the rear of the engine, it will move in sync with the flywheel. On another video, I was able to install one of these engines in my Tiger One, and I hooked up an electric motor to the system here, and it's able to spin the, both flywheels in the vehicle, giving it for a very unique appearance. Moving on, we have over here a small eyelet. The engine has four eyelets. There's one on this side, another one behind the oil filter, and then there's two more on the other side of the engine. These eyelets allow for the engine to be removed from the vehicle, the vehicle via chains. On the tank's manual starter, we have here a small universal joint that runs through the hollow oil tank via a channel and then go into another universal joint which would then go into this starter device here. The manual starter is different on the HL210 and the HL230. The HL210, the starter, is in line with the flywheel while on the HL230 it is not is directly below it and the starter itself is canted in an angle. Moving our way up we have here the tanks exhaust manifold system. Now if we notice the manifold has a heat shield mounted to it. This heat shield is bolted together. The inner manifold is what's rusty over here and on the back end of the engine, this is where it would connect to the tank's exhaust system. Now what's unique about the Tiger One or about the Maybach in general is that the left and right hand side exhaust cooling guards or heat shields are not symmetrical. The one on this side bends inward while the one on this side is straight but has an hourglass appearance to it. These heat shields serve two functions on the Tiger One. Besides keeping, and it, besides being an insulator from the hot exhaust manifold, it would connect to the firewall 
and to an exhaust cooling duct that would help draw cool air out uh, to cool the exhaust smoke and then out through the exhaust stacks. The flywheel here, when it directly enters into the firewall, would spin a fan propeller. The fan propeller would then draw, would then power the cool air to be drawn out of the tank through the exhaust, through via the the shields, and then out through the exhaust stacks of the tank. So the Tiger One had actually a very elaborate system for cooling the exhaust smoke as well as ventilating the tank's interior. Moving our way up, we have here the tank's exhaust manifold system. Now, if we notice, the manifold has a heat shield mounted to it. This heat shield is bolted together. The inner manifold is what's rusty over here. And on the back end of the engine, this is where it would connect to the tank's exhaust system. Now, what's unique about the Tiger One or about the Maybach in general is that the left and right hand side exhaust cooling guards or heat shields are not symmetrical. The one on this side bends inward, while the one on this side is straight but has an hourglass appearance to it. These heat shields serve two functions on the Tiger One. Besides keeping, and it, besides being an insulator from the hot exhaust manifold, it would connect to the firewall and to an exhaust cooling duct that would help draw cool air out uh, to cool the exhaust smoke and then out through the exhaust stacks. The flywheel here, when it directly enters into the firewall, would spin a fan propeller. The fan propeller would then draw, would then power the cool air to be drawn out of the tank through the exhaust, through via the, the the shields, and then out through the exhaust stacks of the tank. So the Tiger One had actually a very elaborate system for cooling the exhaust smoke as well as ventilating the tank's interior. Moving our way back to the manifold, we have here the control rods for the carburetors. If we notice on either side of the rear portion of the engine, the control rods are spring bound. This would then return the throttle or control the throttle when the foot would be let off the accelerator, it would return the carburetors to the off state. This here is the control rod. Now they can connect to the carburetors in a very elaborate fashion. The control rod connects to the first carburetor here which would then have a clevis system and rod system which would then connect the first carburetor to the center manifold which would then connect via this clevis here to these two carburetors. This clevis here, would, besides connecting to the center manifold, would also connect to the last carburetor. This, series, this orchestrated series would then work and power the engine. This system is identical to both the HL210 and the HL230. The only difference between the two engines is the amount of fuel, or the fuel lines. On the HL210, because of all four separators, required a lot more fuel lines to facilitate the job. On the HL230, the fuel lines would then be split in two different places so that it would then facilitate the fuel into the, in the carbs. The final exterior difference between the two engines is the air filtration system. The HL210 sat on a large air duct with a special shape to fit in between the carburetor stacks, or the magneto stacks. This duct contained three air filters. The HL230 system was a little bit simpler. It used a different design of a of an air duct, and it housed two larger air filter canisters. These would then facilitate cleaning of the air into the carburetors, like so. These are one of the main differences in appearance between the two engines. And that concludes this video showcase and walkthrough of the EastCoastArmory.com 
Resin HL210 and HL230 engines. Don't forget to stop by EastCoastArmory.com for more information on these engine kits, as well as other builds and details. Thank you.